Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some, some preps that you might've forgotten about. We've recently had some inclement weather with uh, a bunch of tornadoes in the area. And luckily I haven't had any damage to the house except for, you know, a few fallen tree limbs. Let's go over a real life scenario that happened. I went, uh, I took my family and we went to our parents where they they have a basement it's a little safer at their house and i had been going through my get home bag and i had all the stuff kind of scattered around because i was testing it all out making youtube videos with it and whatnot and whenever uh we found out that the storms were coming I had to hurry up and try to pack all this stuff back in the bag. Luckily, I had enough time to do it. But keep that in mind, you know. If you're, if you're going through and using the stuff in your bag, which you will. I mean, I use that stuff all the time. Then you need to go back and um, you need to put it back as soon as you're done. Because... When the time comes that you need it, you need it now. And then let's talk about something else. I've got, I've got these radios that have uh, the Noah Noah Weathers in it, and very good radios. But you need to make sure that they're charged. My kids like to play with these, and also the this is a it's like a cheap cheaper radio that the batteries don't stay charged in them all the time you need to think about maybe getting an extra set of batteries or something along that line because whenever i needed this i didn't have it because the batteries were dead so keep that in mind too keep them charged and um you'll be good to go now one more thing you need to think about a generator gasoline and some extension cords first off the generator so when the tornado started heading through it knocked out the power right away and we got the generator out we got it fueled up and that was it was all set good to go i think that we did an excellent job on that but this being said When's the last time you fired up your generator? Um, is it gonna start? You might've started it whenever it was brand new and it ran just fine, but if it's got a carburetor on it and you've been letting it sit for a couple years, chances are it's gummed up and you're not gonna be able to get it to run whenever you need it to run. So take a look at it today if you can. And then for the second thing, gasoline. So luckily, they had the power on in the middle of the night last night and the generator didn't have to work, run for days on end. But if it did, how much gasoline do you have stored up? Do you have just one five gallon can of gas? Cause it's not going to last, it's not going to last you a week. Okay. You need to have several and they need to be filled. And, um, if it if the gas starts to if you think it's getting old you know if it's been six eight months and you ain't used it put it in your vehicle and then go fill them up again instead of instead of putting the new gas right in your vehicle i mean you you never have to waste any of this stuff and then the third thing is cords how many extension cords do you have do you have enough extension cords to run from your generator which is outside to your basement with your sump pump and then to a few lights around the house so it it took us about three good extension cords and then um, one of those splitters with a bunch of different outlets on it but keep that in mind you know it's it's probably further than you think once you uh go through the different rooms with the extension cord your 25 foot extension cord probably isn't going to do it you i would recommend at least a 50 foot maybe even a 100 foot 
and um, the uh, the outlet strips you can buy them in two different ways um, we got a three-way splitter and it's just like a mini extension cord too with a three-way on it and then you can also get those regular outlet strips that you put in your house you know for like your computer desk those work really well too I would have one of those on hand I would also like to recommend having some extra lights and plug-in lights at that battery lights are great um, you need those whenever you're first starting up your generator and getting it all ready but plug-in lights you know you get your outlet strip you can run other extension cords and you can have a light in each room and it's it's like you got power again now with that being said there's some things that you're not going to provide power to and in the first probably six hours I wouldn't even worry about your fridge don't open it it's going to be good for about 24 hours without opening your fridge they're pretty efficient after that you really need to think about getting that fridge plugged in so your food doesn't spoil and then with that being said you're also going to have things that don't work like your heating and air conditioning now if it's during the summer I wouldn't even worry about the air conditioning you're just going to have to deal with being a little bit hot but your air conditioner will it'll draw a lot of power and unless you have a real high output generator you're probably not going to be able to able to power it but your furnace you can you can actually hook that up to a 110 and what you need to do if you're comfortable in installing it is you need to install like uh, some kind of plug-in that you can plug an extension cord into that you can then run to your generator um, you can do this and have it professionally done and it's probably it's going to be safe that way but make sure whenever you do this that you don't leave anything exposed so whenever you're not using your your furnace um, using your generator to power your furnace you're not going to get shocked whenever you touch it um, so yeah keep that in mind maybe have a an outlet that your your furnace plugs into instead of being hardwired into your electricity and then whenever it's time to uh, switch over to the generator you just unplug it and plug it into an extension cord and then the last thing that I want to talk about is you're gonna be real tempted to plug in your 220 volt uh, double male end to a 220 volt plug in your home thinking that that's gonna power your whole home and it might if you don't run certain things but before you do that you got to realize that people are working on these power lines and that that extra power is going to go right back up in the into the telephone poles and it's going to shock somebody so i do not recommend that at all they make um, changeover boxes so don't don't cheap out on this and just plug it right into the wall because you could kill somebody it's very serious but um, they make things that you can tie into your uh, your circuit box, your breaker board, and it will disconnect you from this from the the power lines before it allows the generator's power to come in, and that's that's the way to properly do that. So any guy, anyway, guys. I uh, hope you thought that that was helpful and hope you got some some good ideas from it. Let me know in the comments if you got anything to add and then don't forget to to subscribe if you liked this content. Have a good day. Bye-bye.